Queen Victoria's forgotten half-sister, who was Princess Theodora. The childhood of Queen Victoria is usually depicted as a lonely one, full of strict rules and nothing else. But Victoria grew up at Kensington Palace, alongside her older half-sister, Theodora, who was 12 years her senior. The young Victoria would walk through the gardens of Kensington Gardens, wishing onlookers a cheerful good morning. The young princess was not allowed to be on her own. She was watched like a hawk. Even during her walks of the grounds meant she was joined by her mother, the Duchess of Kent, who held one of her hands, and Victoria's older half-sister, Princess Theodora, held the other. The trio became a well-known spectacle near Kensington Palace, and they were often described by one observer as a group of exquisite loveliness. Victoria had always had a turbulent relationship with her mother, with their relationship leading to an eventual reconciliation once her mother had dropped the controlling John Conroy from her life. She did, however, remain very close to Theodora throughout her life. The sisters Victoria and Theodora communicated with one another for decades and offered each other with advice and emotional support as siblings often do. Princess Theodora was born in Borivia, Germany in 1807. She was the second child of Princess Victoria of saxe coburg and Salfield, and her first husband, Emmett Karl, Prince of Lenigan, who was much older than her mother. Theodora lived with her older brother, who was also called Karl, and they grew up alongside their mother and maternal grandmother, the Doja Duchess Augusta of saxe coburg her father was away fighting in the Napoleonic Wars. Augusta, her grandmother, wrote that Theodora is a charming little clown who already shows grace in every movement of her small body. At the young age of only seven, in 1814, Theodora's father died. Her mother was left widowed and so she went on to marry another man called Edward the Duchess of Kent, who was the fourth son of George III and who took on both Theodora and Karl as if they were his own. The British government were looking for an heir to the throne and the Duke of Kent was a bachelor with no intention of marrying or ever having children, but due to the heir of the throne dying during childbirth, the quest for a new heir of England began and that was the beginning of her mother's marriage with Edward, the Duke of Kent. The Duchess followed out her expectation of providing the country with its heir when she became pregnant quickly in 1819. The family then relocated to England so that the potential heir to the British throne would be born on British soil. Theodora's half-sister Victoria was born in May 1819 at Kensington Palace. Only six months later, her new stepfather Edward, the Duke of Kent, died, leaving her mother widowed once again. Like Victoria, Theodora was reportedly unhappy at her dismal existence at Kensington Palace when they were relegated to the decaying rooms of Kensington Palace. They had fallen from grace and they were abandoned by the government, despite Victoria being their heir to the throne. When Theodora was 20 years old, she would be engaged and married to Ernest I in February 1828. The pair had only met twice and he was 13 years her senior. The match was arranged by Queen Adelaide of Great Britain as Prince Ernest I was her first cousin. As the half-sister of the future queen, Theodora could have married someone much higher profile and nobility. However, upon meeting Ernest, she believed him to be a kind and handsome, and so she was keen to marry him with the hope of escaping Kensington Palace. Indeed, she later wrote to her sister that she escaped some years of imprisonment 
which you, my poor dear sister, had to endure after I was married. Often have I praised God that he sent my dear Ernest, for I might have married I don't know whom, merely to get away. Victoria took her role at her sister's wedding as a bridesmaid, with Theodora later fondly writing, I always see you, dearest little girl, going round with the basket presenting favours. Once married, the young women in new marriages were expected to move away and start a new family with their husband. And not long after their honeymoon, Theodora and Ernest moved to Germany, where she stayed until her death. Theodora and Victoria significantly missed one another and they communicated through letters frequently with great affection, with Victoria telling her older sister about her dolls and emotions. It would be six long years until the two sisters would reunite. They returned to Kensington Palace to spend some time together and upon her departure Victoria wrote, I clasped her in my arms and kissed her and cried as if my heart would break. So did she, dearest sister. We then tore ourselves from each other in the deepest grief. I sobbed and cried most violently the whole morning. Theodora took her role as a wife seriously and managed to provide her husband with plentiful children. The couple had six children, three boys and three girls, all of whom survived into adulthood. One of her children, Elise, died at 19 of tuberculosis. After Elise's death, Victoria sent a thoughtful gift to her sister of a bracelet containing a miniature portrait of Theodora's late daughter to her. Through their correspondence, it was evident that the sisters shared parenting styles. Their styles differed, with Theodora encouraging leniency with Victoria's son, Edward, who had been playing pranks on his siblings. As another homage to her sister, Victoria and Albert named their youngest daughter, Beatrice Mary Victoria Theodore, in her honour. Both sisters were in happy marriages, but both of their lives came crashing down around the same time. Both Victoria and Theodora were widowed when Ernest died in 1860 and Albert died in 1861. Victoria wished to keep her sister close to her and for them to live together as widows in Britain, but her sister refused. Perhaps she wanted to avoid years of mourning and strict rules. Instead valuing her independence, Theodora responded to Victoria's invitation in writing, I cannot give up my house nor my independence at my age. Twelve years after the death of her husband, in 1872, Theodora's youngest daughter died of scarlet fever. Theodora was inconsolable, writing that she wished that my lord would be pleased to let me soon depart. She died later the same year, aged 64, likely from cancer. She died on the 23rd of September 1872 in her home after a long sickbed. Queen Victoria had last stayed with her sister in March of that year, when Victoria travelled to Baden-Baden. Victoria and Theodora said goodbye for the final time on the 6th of April 1872, and just one day later, Theodora wrote, My beloved Victoria, the parting from you was very painful and that would be the last time the sisters would meet. Unfortunately, Theodora was already ill by then. Queen Victoria was devastated by Theodora's death, writing, My own darling, only sister, my dear, excellent, noble Theodora is no more. God's will be done, but the loss to me is too dreadful. I stand so alone now. No near and dear one nearer my own age, or older, to whom I could look up to, left. She was my last near relative of an equality with me, the last link with my childhood and youth. A letter which was dated to 1854 was found among Theodora's papers after her death. Addressed to Victoria, it stated, 
I can never thank you enough for all that you have done for me, for your great love and tender affection. These feelings cannot die. They must and will live in my soul. Till we meet again, never more to be separated, and you will not forget. Queen Victoria, who made a private trip to the villa for three days in September 1873, where she visited Theodora's grave and approved the final design for the monument created by Theodora's son, Victor. The angel on the tomb looks directly to the villa across the valley, although the villa no longer exists as Theodora would have known it. Theodora's grave still stands in Baden-Baden and can be visited. There have been many TV programmes written on the famous sisters, with various on-screen portrayals of Theodora, depicting her as having a range of different personalities. However, letters and correspondence between the sisters evidences an affectionate relationship between her and her sister. She was both warm and wise and deserves to be considered a valuable source of advice and care throughout Victoria's significant reign. The brother of Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria's half-brother Charles came into the world on the 12th of September 1804. He was born to Emmett Carl, the second Prince of Lenigan, and Princess Victoria of saxe coburg selfeld at the age of 17, Victoria herself entered into marriage with the widowed Emmett Carl, who was 40 years old at the time. Emmett Carl had previously been married to Victoria's aunt, Henriette, and in 1807, a daughter named Theodora was born. Carl had received his education at a private school in Bern and later pursued law studies at the University of Göttingen. There he studied under Carl Frederick a renowned expert in German constitutional law and a leading advocate of the German historical school of jurisprudence. During this time at the British court, Karl developed a keen interest in various forms of art. In 1828, he commenced the construction of Waldlenigen Castle, which served as his private residence. The architectural style of the castle was inspired by neo-Gothic castles found in Britain such as Abbotsford House. As a noble family, the Princes of Lenigan held seats in the, the Landtag Diet of Baden, Barivia and Hesse. In 1842, Prince Karl assumed the role of President of the Barivian Upper House, and he additionally pursued a military career in the Barivian Army and held the honorary rank of Lieutenant General in the Cavalry. On the 20th of April 1842, Karl and 20 other noblemen convened at Beebrick Palace to establish the Edelsverein. The purpose of this organisation was to facilitate the settlement of German immigrants in Texas, and Karl was elected as its president. Following the German revolutions of 1848 to 1849, Lenigan gained considerable recognition as a progressive reformer and free thinker. He passionately advocated for the implementation of parliamentary systems and openly criticised the privileges enjoyed by aristocracy. As a result, on the 6th of August 1848, he was appointed as the Prime Minister of Revolutionary Germany by Regent Archduke John of Austria. The appointment of a Catholic head of state and a Lutheran head of government such as Lenigan created a balance within the German dualism system. Furthermore, his close ties to the British royal house were generally well received, and initially Lenigan's cabinet enjoyed support from a majority of liberals and left-wing members in the newly established Frankfurt Parliament. However, on the 5th of September, a significant event occurred, known as Schleswig-Holstein Question. King Frederick William of Prussia unilaterally signed with Denmark in Malmö which sparked outrage among the delegates of the Frankfurt Assembly. The reaction was so intense that Lenigan, unable to assert the authority of the central government, was compelled to resign from his position as Prime Minister. He was succeeded by Anton von Schmerling, an Austrian politician who served as Prime Minister until December. Throughout Victoria's days, Victoria spent most of her time in the company of her lady-in-waiting, Baroness Spath 
When her husband passed away in 1814, it likely brought some relief to Victoria, and she embraced her newfound independence. Victoria held a deep affection for her son, and initially she hesitated to remarry the Duke of Kent, fearing that she might lose custody as Charles. However, her brother, who would later become King Leopold I of Belgians, managed to convince her otherwise. As Victoria embarked on her new journey, Charles was away at school in Switzerland, and on the 24th of May 1819, his half-sister was born, and in November, Charles sent a congratulatory letter from Geneva to mark his stepfather's birthday. Unfortunately, they didn't have many opportunities to spend time together, as the Duke of Kent passed away on the 23rd of January 1820, leaving his mother widowed once again. Charles began studying law at university in 1821. However, it wasn't until Charles reached adulthood that he had the chance to meet his half-sister for the very first time. In the summer of 1825, the entire family, including Charles and their shared grandmother, Augusta, embarked on a journey to Claremont. They gathered there to celebrate the Duchess of Kent's birthday. And during Victoria's youth, she and her half-brother were not close, mainly because Charles had aligned himself with the widely disliked Sir John Conroy, upon whom he relied for financial support. On the 13th of February 1829, Charles entered into marriage with Maria von Klebelsberg, who had previously served as lady-in-waiting to Prince Albert's mother, Princess Louise. Charles' choice of bride did not sit well with his family, and they were far from pleased. He and his new wife settled in Amberbach and embarked on extravagant and costly renovations, seemingly funded by the Duchess of Kent's accounts. On the 9th of December 1830, Maria gave birth to their first child, Ernest Leopold, who would eventually succeed Charles as the Prince of Lenigan. A second son, Eduard Frederick, was born in 1833, and for Charles, a continuation of his mother's regency over Victoria meant extended financial support, which led him to turn against his half-sister. Their relationship grew to be one of animosity, and Victoria developed a strong hatred for him. She frequently expressed her disdain for the wickedness of the Prince of Lenigan and his friend, Sir John. Baron Stockmar, an advisor to the then Princess Victoria, warned Charles to seize his bullying behaviour and reminded him that treachery, lies and fraud were not the means to achieve success. However, Charles stubbornly refused to back down and even told his half-sister, do you think the people celebrate your reign with unbounded joy, believing you to be their hope simply because you will be queen at 18? Oh no, they anticipate that you will follow in your, in your mother's footsteps. He praised John Conroy, claiming that Conroy had diligently laboured for years to create a substantial popularity for Victoria. When Queen Victoria turned 18, Charles happened to be in London. On that afternoon, he, Victoria and their mother took a ride through the parks, and despite Victoria's deep-seated hatred for her half-brother, upon her accession to the throne, she bestowed upon him the Order of the Garter. This gesture hinted at a possible thawing of their relationship, and it seemed that their bond might improve over the coming years. Charles made frequent visits, including one in the summer of 1848, when he joined Victoria, Albert and their two older children in Scotland. During that year, Charles briefly held the position of President of the Reich Ministry. In 1855, Charles suffered an apoplectic attack, and the following year he experienced a fatal second attack. On the 13th of November 1856, he passed away, with Theodora by his side. Victoria, who was expecting her final child at the time, was also grappling with a severe cough and exhaustion. Now, in addition to her other burdens, she had to mourn the loss of her half-brother, and Charles was succeeded by his eldest son as the Prince of Lenigan. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories, and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.